Welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I am self-converting my Ram Pearl Master to live, travel, and work in full-time on the road. Subscribe to my channel to follow my van build series and check me out on Instagram for more frequent van life updates. In today's video, I show you how I installed my composite roof deck to the roof of my van. And I have to say, it's pretty neat how a rooftop view completely changes your perspective of the beautiful landscapes you will travel to. Not to mention, living in such a small space like a van, it's nice to have another room that you can go to for a change of scenery and to get fresh air. My roof deck does sit a few inches off of the roof of my van itself, which does provide shade to the van and helps to keep the temperature inside my van a little bit cooler. And lastly, having a roof deck to walk on is better than walking on the roof of your van itself, which is already going to be pretty weak from the max air fans that I installed and could potentially damage the ceiling and overhead cabinetry inside my van. So please be sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment below, and check the description box for a link to my Instagram where I post more frequent van build updates. With that, let's get started. For my roof deck, I am using composite decking. So I bought two 12 foot long boards. It's an inch thick and five and a half inches wide. I got this brown color, but you can also get it in like a gray color as well. Composite decking is great because it's really durable and it's going to last all the weather conditions that it's gonna encounter on the roof of my van, and like rain, sun, even maybe snow. The only downside of going with composite decking is it is very, very heavy. So just be conscious of that when you're adding stuff to the roof of your van so that you're not making it too top heavy or adding a lot of unnecessary weight to your van. I'm just doing a small section in the front of my van on both sides of my front max air fan. So far this material has been really easy to work with. I cut the boards to length with a skill saw to run from one crossbar to the other on my roof rack. To do so, I placed a strip of painter's tape on the board at the length I'd be cutting it so I could mark a line on the tape to see it easier while I cut. After making two marks on the tape at the length needed, I connected those two marks with a right angle to give me a relatively straight line. Next, I clamped the board down to a solid surface so I could cut it safely with a skill saw. Remember to wear safety glasses as the composite decking flakes will fly into your face. I used the wood blade I already had on the skill saw and it worked beautifully, so there's no need for anything special. <laughs> now going to start pre-drilling holes for my bolts to go into, one bolt on each end and also using a paddle bit to eat away some more material so I can add a washer with that bolt as well. It is important that you get accurate measurements from one crossbar channel to the other so you pre-drill in the correct location. Again, I use painter's tape to mark where the hole needed to go in order to be centered and fit into the crossbar channel. Once I determine the location, I drilled in that spot with a 3 8 inch drill bit on both ends of the boards. From there, I used a 1 inch paddle bit to remove more material around the opening to fit the 3 quarter inch diameter washers that I purchased. To make sure I was removing just enough material for the hardware to sit flush to the board, I had the bolts, lock washers, and flat washers on hand to test the fit as I went. Then, it was time to bring the boards up to the roof for permanent install. If you're doing a roof deck, I would assume you have a roof rack with 80-20 crossbars like I do. So I went ahead and bought those T-nuts and inserted them into the channel so that I can feed a bolt into it and tighten it. To put the T-nuts into the two crossbar channels, I did have to remove the two crossbars from the roof rack side rails to insert them before securing the crossbars back to the side rails. If I had known my roof deck plans prior to installing my roof rack, 
I would have added them to the channels to save some time, but it was no biggie. Just a tip if you haven't installed your roof rack yet. I purchased the 10 series T-Nuts from Flatline Vanco. I used quarter inch by 20 thread bolts that are an inch and a quarter long, quarter inch lock washers, and a quarter inch flat washer. And so it's gonna go bolt, lock washer, flat washer, board, and then feed into the T-nut and the crossbar channels up on my roof rack. I found it best to keep the extra T-nuts in the channel out of the way, especially so they wouldn't end up stuck under the board and not be accessible. Move over one T-nut per crossbar to work with. Once I got one bolt started in the T-knot, I jumped over to the other end of the board to line that bolt up to the T-knot. Once both bolts were started in the T-knots, I slid the board in place before tightening the bolts further with a Phillips head tool. I did have a couple boards that I took a little too much material off of with the paddle bit, so I just doubled up with the flat washers to compensate for that. Now, if I were to do this project over again, one thing I would change is I would add support beams underneath each section of the roof deck because in full transparency, if you don't distribute your weight evenly on these boards, they do bow. And it's not a big deal, but I fear over time that they will remain bowed and become a tripping hazard on the roof of your van and could potentially damage my roof rack over time. In both situations, I do not want occurring. How I'm going to address this further down the van build is I'm going to add some 80-20 crossbar channels underneath each of the roof deck sections. I'm going to add two verticals underneath the deck on both sides in between the two crossbars on the roof rack. And then between those two verticals, I wanna add another 80-20 crossbar channel that's perpendicular. So it's almost gonna create an H shape underneath their, each roof deck section. Now I haven't tried this out, so I don't know if it's actually going to solve the problem or not, but theoretically in my mind, I feel like it would. So if you end up doing it, please let me know how it goes in the comments. With that, I hope this video gave you the confidence and knowledge you need to install your own composite roof deck. Tune into my next video where I'll be installing a swivel seat, followed by the install of my ceiling and ceiling puck lights. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. I can't snap with my left hand. <laughs> oh shoot. I'm getting too old for that.